Hey, how are you guys doing this morning? My name is Ryan Fowler, and I just wanted to speak with you a few moments this morning on the importance of the local church body in the life of a believer. Um, and the 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 uh, particular passage that I chose to for this study is out of Acts two, and we see the beginning of the New Testament church as we know it, when Paul preached at Pentecost. Um, the Holy Spirit convicted all of these people of their sins. He presented the gospel to them, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And as a result, thousands of people were saved. And following their conversion, they come to be a part of a local church body, and they came to see the importance of a church body um, for their Christian walk, their walk of faith in Jesus. So I want to read a couple verses, uh, beginning in Acts chapter 2. Verses 42 through 47 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The importance of the local church, um, the importance of church membership for a Christian um, is so important. Um, I came across some statistics that I thought were uh, very, um, they got my attention, um, very um, staggering. In 2017, less than 20% of Americans regularly attend church. Um, I'm, a, I'm a young adult, I'm 25 years old, and um, with young adults ranging from the ages of 23 to 27, only 28% of those young adults attend church regularly. Um, 50% of unchurched Americans can't find a positive impact for church. So 50% of people who are unchurched, they can't see any positive impact. They can't see anything good that can come out of church. But still, those same unchurched people, 37 of them can't find a negative impact either. They can't see a negative reason not to go to church. Um, those statistics are staggering. Those are uh, attention-getting, and they should be for us as Christians and burden us. Um, and, you know, I, thought, I got to thinking about uh, church membership, um, being a regular attendee, being faithful, uh, a faithful member of a church membership, local body. And I got to thinking of the excuses that people use for not going to church, for not being uh, faithful in their uh, worship with one another and the fellowship and the gathering uniting as a local body. Um, you know, excuse after excuse that people can provide. Um, you know, a lot for a lot of people, Sunday might be their only day they get off work or Saturday and Sunday and they just want some time to themselves. Um, they've just got too much going on. Um, they've got other priorities that are going on. Um, excuse after excuse that people use to not go to church. Um, we live in a generation, when, in, a, in a society, that says church is not important. That's the society and the generation that we live in today. They say that church is not important. Um, we live in a time that says it doesn't matter if you go to church or not. Um, if you go, good. If you don't go, oh well, that, 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 that's okay too. Um, and sadly, more and more Christians more and more believers, more and more followers of Jesus Christ are failing to realize the importance of the local body in their walk of faith. Um, these are Christians. You know, I've come in contact with many Christians, many good um, people who believe in Jesus Christ, but they fail to realize the importance of the local body. Um, even if they may attend once a week or once a month. Um, they, 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 they fail to realize the importance of being committed and being plugged in to a local body and the impact that can have on their life. Um, I, I do want to make something clear, and, and that is that 
I believe that no person is saved by going to church. Um, being a church member is not going to save you. But I do believe that if you are saved and if you're living in the middle of God's will for his life, for your life, he's going to give you a desire to go to church. He's going to give you a desire to be plugged in. Um, your love for him and your passion for him is going to lead you to want to get plugged in and to want to be a part of a local body of Christ. Um, you know, when it comes to the term church, the word church itself, many are confused. Many are confused about what the church is, what a church is. Um, the word church, uh, the church itself is not a building. Um, you know, so often uh, we joke around and we, we talk about a lot in our church, in our small group, um, saying, why do we get up in, on, the, on Sunday mornings or whenever and we say, we're going to church. Um, the church is not the building. The church is the people. The church is the body of Christ. Um, and there's two different terms I want to use for church just to, to help, you, help, help maybe you understand something. Um, the first one is the universal church. If you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, a, a, a believer in Jesus Christ, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're a member of the universal church. That's universally all people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're a member of the universal church. Um, that's the universal. That's worldwide. All, all Christians everywhere are a member of that body of Christ. And then there's the local church. And this is a local body of Christ that every Christian needs to be a part of. Um, that's, that's the local church where you live. Um, no matter what type of building it is, no matter where they meet, where they meet, um, what time, um, it's that local body, that, 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 that church body that's right there locally that you can regularly attend, that you can get plugged into, that you can be a part of, that you can serve um, for the kingdom of God at. So um, in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, I wanted to read that really fast to kind of help us understand the local body. Um, the writer of Hebrews says, and let us consider how we may spur one, one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So see, the, the, the writer of Hebrews says for us not to give up meeting together, to not give up meeting together, but to see the importance of coming together and meeting together as the local body. Um, the local church is a vital part of a Christian's life. Um, the local church, I believe, is necessary for a Christian. I believe that a Christian can't live a successful life. They can't live in victory. They can't live in the middle of God's will without being a part of a local church body, without being plugged in somewhere. Um, it is vital. And because of its necessariness, its vitalness in the, in the Christian's life, every Christian should consider being a part of a local church body because of the benefits it has in your life. Every Christian should consider being a part of, the lo of a local church body because of the benefits, because of the positive impact, because of the positive difference it can make in your life. Um, and, 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 and referencing back to Acts 2, the couple of verses I read, I just want to mention uh, a couple of benefits that we can gain from this early New Testament church. Um, as I said earlier, this early New Testament church, the, the, the church as we know it, these early believers, they saw the importance. Um, they saw that it was necessary for them to come together as a local body, as local Christians, um, to unite themselves together. They saw the impact and the difference it made in their life and their walk with Christ. So, a couple of benefits that the local church can have in the life of a believer. And the first one is this, the benefit of Bible study. Um, in verse 42, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So we see there, they saw how important it was for them to come together and to open up the Word of God and for them to study the Word of God and for them to to be able to have the Word of God, the Apostles' teaching, preached to them. Um, they saw how important that was for them. And, and for us too as, as Christians, um, 
as, 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 as a part of a local body of Christ, a local church body, we have the opportunity to, to open the Word of God. We have the opportunity for the Word of God to speak into our lives. Um, a church will fail to be a church if they fail to open up the Word of God and to teach the Word of God and to preach the Word of God. There's nothing more important than the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God. Um, and if you're a member, if you are a part of a local church body, you have that opportunity to be fed the Word of God, to sit around God's table and to, to feast on His Word, um, to allow His Word to speak into your life, to change your life. Um, you know, I got, I got to thinking of the different ways that churches, and just thinking about my church in particular, um, you know, we have, we have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Um, or small groups as some churches have them, um, that opportunity to come together in a smaller atmosphere and to open God's Word and to study it and to talk about it. Um, the preaching uh, during a worship service, the preaching of the Word of God. When your pastor gets up and proclaims the Word of God to you, um, you know, just different Bible studies that you, ha that you may have throughout the week. Um, at our church in the last year or so, we started... Um, the Ignite Ministry. It's a college ministry and a young adults ministry. And we meet on Wednesday nights at 630. And we meet for a time of just fellowship and hanging out. And then we also, we spend time in God's Word. Um, the Word of God, it's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. Um, the Word of God, it's so important. And that's what's so important about being a part of a, a, a local church is you have that opportunity um, to feast on the Word of God. Um, we need the Word of God every every chance we can we we have for it. So the benefit of the Word of God in our lives to open up and to study it to for it to be preached to us, proclaimed to us. Not only the benefit of the, the Word of God, the Bible study as the New Testament church did early, but the second one is the benefit of unity and family. The benefit of unity and family. Verse 44 says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. Um, the benefit of unity and family. You see, this early church, this early New Testament church, these believers, they saw the importance of fellowship. They saw the importance of unity. They saw the importance of coming together. They saw the importance of a family. And I tell you, I tell you something that being a member of a local church body gives you a new understanding of what family is all about. Being a part of a local church, family, body, church, it'll give you a whole new meaning, a whole new understanding of what family is all about. And if you are a member of a local church and it doesn't feel like a family, I want to challenge you to look for that. Um, to maybe try to find something else. Because if it's not like a family to you, um, you need to try to find that. That's what it's about. The body of Christ, the local body of Christ, it's a family. It's where you can come together. You can be united. Um, you can love on it, one another. You can care for one another. You can rejoice with one another. You can share your burdens and your cares and your worries and your troubles with one another. It, it helps you understand what family, relationships, are all about. Um, you know, I got to thinking about some crucial times in people's lives when they would love to have a church family, when they would love to have the unity of a church family. You know, I got to thinking of when there might be a death in your family. Our pastors told us so many times of, of, of families who had a death, but they didn't have a church family, and how sad it is to see a family have to go through a death like that without a church family, without a loving pastor, without people who come together around them, embrace them, and who care for them, and pray for them, and love on them. What about a marriage when, you know, something simple as getting married. I'm getting married in June, and we've got a church family, and we've got a pastor that's going to marry us, and our church family, they're going to throw a shower for us, and they embrace us, and they love on us, and they're so excited for us. Um, what about you have, you have a new baby? Um, and for people to come and visit you 
uh, you and your baby while you're in the hospital, or maybe just when someone's sick, or you yourself may be sick in the hospital or nursing home, and for somebody to come visit you and to just spend time with you, or maybe you need some kind of counseling, uh, marriage counseling, or whatever it may be, um, just the troubles and the valleys of life, and you need somebody to talk to, you need a shoulder to cry on, uh, uh, someone to just um, speak uh, with. That's what that, that family is for. That's what that unity and that oneness is for. And if we don't have that, we as Christians, if we don't have this unity with our fellow brothers and sisters, if we don't have some sort of family and we don't have some sort of fellowship with one another, we're missing out on so much that God has for us in our lives. So not only the benefit of the Word of God, the preaching and the teaching of it, the benefit of the unity and the family of a local church body, but the third one is the benefit of corporate worship. The benefit of corporate worship. Verses 46 and 47 say, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. They saw the importance of corporate worship, the importance of coming together as individuals, as a family. They come together and corporately worship God, to worship and to praise God. One of the most vital aspects, one of the most important aspects in our Christian walk is the privilege that we have to come together and to worship and to praise God. You know, I got to thinking of a worship service, um, and all of them are different. There's no right, no wrong. But I just got to thinking about ours and, and what our corporate worship service consists of and what so many people are missing out on because they're not a part of a local church body. A corporate worship service consists of, a t of time, multiple times of prayer, praying, uh, praying individually, praying with groups, praying with hands and hearts connected, times of prayer, times of singing, times of singing praise and worship, whether it's hymns or whether it's praise and worship songs, whatever it may be, whatever type of music, the opportunity to sing praises unto God. A time of fellowship in our, at, our, at our church every Sunday morning, about halfway through the service, we have a time of fellowship where we can go around and meet and greet people and just say hello and give a a, a handshake or a neck hug to people and to welcome them and to just speak and to talk uh, a word of encouragement into someone. The time of giving. Giving is a time of worship. We worship the Lord through our giving. Um, the time of preaching the word. This is the time of worship, that we worship the Lord through the preaching, the studying of his word. We allow his word to speak into our lives. And then maybe most importantly, the time of worship consists of a time of decision-making, a time of responding to God. All throughout the service, throughout worship service, God is speaking and God is moving, but it's, it, it, it ultimately comes to, down to us and how we're going to respond to what God has spoken to our lives that day. But so much that a corporate worship service consists of, and how important that is that we we have that opportunity, we have that privilege to come together and to sing and to pray and to give and to fellowship and to open the word and to ultimately to make decisions for Christ and to, 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 to come before, the, before God and to ask forgiveness and to allow Him to change our lives and to speak into our lives. That's what He wants to do for each and every one of us. The benefit of God's word, opening God's word, to study it, to have it preached to us, the benefit of unity and family, the benefit of corporate worship. These are just a few of so many other benefits of the local church body in the life of a Christian. So many more, but just a few of these. You see, there's, there's so many people that are missing out on what, ch on, on what the local church is all about. So many different ministries so much fun, so much unity and love and peace and joy. We see here this early New Testament church, they saw the importance of what it was to be united, to come together for the time of, of worship, a time of prayer, a time of Bible study, a time of fellowship, a time of decision making. 
And the, the, the same is, is true for us, that we must see that importance. And I want to challenge you guys. If you're not locally involved in a church, get involved. Get plugged in. Get, get plugged into some kind of small group. You can't live on an island. You can't do it by yourself. I've heard Christians say, I don't need to go to church. I can have church at home or I can have church so-and-so. Yes, church is with the people, but you need to come together. You need somebody to hold you accountable. That's what it's all about. So, so often we've got in our mind, we live in the generation that people want it easy and people want it comfortable. But but I believe God has clearly made, being a part of a local church, He's made it, he's, he, he stated the importance of that. As the writer of Hebrews says, let us not neglect meeting together, but let us see the importance of coming together, whether it's on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, uh, some Bible study throughout the week, whatever it is, I challenge you, I dare you to get involved, to, to get in a local church body and keep trying till you find something that fits you. All churches are different. All churches have different styles, but keep doing it till you find something that fits you. The importance, the impact of the local church in the life of a Christian. God bless you.